We're back uh, with the uh, highest ranking African American in the United States Congress, Democratic Congressman James Clyburn of South Carolina. You, you said those provocative words, Congressman, those four governors, you're referring to Haley Barber, Mark Sanford, Bobby Jindal, Rick Perry, uh, represent states that are in the black belt. I was insulted by that. All of this was a slap in the face of our African Americans. You're referring to their opposition to the economic stimulus plan. What was the point? What were you trying to make? What I was trying to say is, let's take, for instance, uh, Louisiana. Governor uh, Jindal has uh, been in my office a number of times. He's, been, he's called me a number of times asking for billions of dollars in assistance to stand that community back up uh, as a result of Katrina uh, and Rita. Yet, he says there's something wrong with this money uh, for the stimulus coming out of the same pot that he sees nothing wrong uh, when he's trying to stand back up. Uh, after uh, Katrina. What I was saying by that is this is an insult simply because we have put money uh, in the stimulus package to pay close attention to those communities that have been underserved for the last 30 years. That's what the language says. If you have a community where for the last 30 years more than 20 percent have been living uh, under the poverty level, then 10 percent of this money must be directed to them. Why do you not want to do that? All right. Those are the communities that are hurting. A spokesman for your governor, so that, that, uh, Governor, Mark, governor Mark Sanford of South Carolina, a spokesman uh, said this. He said, a representative Clyburn is no stranger to playing the race card because he has no defense for the runaway spending and the deficits contained in the so-called stimulus bill that will hurt our economy. Spending money at the federal level that we do not have represents a future tax increase on all South Carolinians, regardless of their color. And in the process of doing so, he's ripping off everyone he claims to represent a tough statement from a spokesman from Governor Sanford against you. Well, let's talk about South Carolina. If you look at the formula we put together, there are 12 counties in South Carolina that would fit within this formula. Now, that means with 46 counties in our state, that means that more than 25 percent of our counties are covered by this stipulation needing special attention. All 12 of those counties along the I-95 corridor that's been dubbed the corridor of shame that all these people talk about but never want to do anything about. We have legislation here now with the money to do something about the schools, do something about water and sewage along that corridor uh, in these 12 counties. And now the governor says, I don't want to accept the money. That's why I call this an insult. That's why I say this is a slap in the face because the majority of those counties uh, are, in fact, inhabited by African Americans. So are you uh, saying, and we'll be blunt, uh, that these governors are racist? No, I never used that word in my life, and I will not use it now. I will say this, that the majority of the counties, those 12 counties that are covered by this uh, in South Carolina, are African American counties. That's why I say this is an insult. If you can accept money, and from the other parts of the federal government to do anything else that you want to do. But when it comes to doing something in these counties where unemployment is so high, where health uh, uh, conditions are so bad, where education is so low, we're trying to help those communities. And now you're saying you don't want to accept the money. So uh, that's what I'm saying. I stand by that because that's a fact. So what I hear you saying, and correct me if I'm wrong, Congressman, is that uh, the money that these four governors uh, may, may or may not accept uh, and, and may refuse, reject from the federal government, is money uh, designed primarily to help uh, lower-income communities in these four states, whether Texas, Louisiana, Mississippi, or South Carolina, and the primary uh, benefit of, of, these, of this money would be African Americans. Well... On, on the last part of that is true. The fact of the matter is, no matter what state you are, you will be benefited uh, by the stimulus package. However, if you are in a state where there's been chronic unemployment for 30 years, that's, you know, that's three decades, we are saying that we are going to uh, spend close attention uh, to those communities, spend money there, get those people back to work, do something about their health problems, put water and sewage in those communities so that they can make themselves attractive. Let's fix up the schools. Remember, the president's been talking about J.V. Martin School in Dillon County on the I-95 corridor 
a school that's built in the 1850s where they cannot even teach if there's a train coming by. We're trying to fix up all of that. So the governor of South Carolina is saying, I don't want any money to fix J.V. Martin School. That's an insult to those students that are trying to learn in that dilapidated school that's 150 years old. You think he'll accept the money uh, when all is said and done, Governor Sanford? Well, he doesn't have to because we put the stipulation in here so that the, uh, the legislatures can get this money in all of the states in this country uh, if the governor uh, does not want to accept it. And I've talked to enough legislators in South Carolina. They want to fix the problem. And this is not partisan because every legislator I've discussed this uh, have been Republicans, and they want to do something about it, and I applaud them for it, and I enjoy working with them as I've worked with two uh, Republican governors in the past. You know, what I spent for, uh, almost 18 years working in state government, worked for two Democrats and for two Republicans. So I have no problem working across the line. I have proved that I can do that. And so we are doing that in this instance as well. Congressman, thanks very much for coming in. Well, thank you so much for having me. And to our viewers, you're in the Situation Room happening now, a controversial proposal to tax people on the, on the miles that they drive. It's been tested in Oregon, 